Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinus was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David a Saviour has been born for you who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, here, there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. The Gospel of the Lord. This liturgy opens us up to great joy. We need to leave this liturgy with an overwhelming sense of joy. And we can do that by really focusing on the first reading, the prophecy from the prophet Isaiah. Prophesying so many years, hundreds of years, before Jesus was born here and he is telling the people of Israel about God's plan about how all the things that are oppressing them maybe you have come here today feeling oppressed in some way maybe you feel that there's a great yoke on your shoulder pressing you down, whatever problems you have, the doubts you have, maybe even doubts about the faith, and doubts about Jesus. You might be in that condition today, coming into this church for this liturgy. But the first reading is telling us about how God's plan is to smash this oppression. To smash it is the word that Isaiah uses. 
you have smashed on the day of Midian. And so what I want you to really feel is that all the things that oppress you, particularly sin, and the dark side of all our personalities that tends to doubt, tends to be prone to sin, temptation, which we continue to feel. But that has been smashed, that has been done away with if we believe in Jesus. If we believe in the Jesus that Mary brought forth here. The prophecy of Isaiah is, is fulfilled by this. He says, a child is born to us, a son is given to us. And instead of on our shoulders being this terrible oppression, it sa he says, on his shoulder, dominion rests, and that means rule. So it means the oppression that we feel with our human nature and our weakness and our proneness to sin will be smashed if we allow the dominion of Christ to rest on us, not oppress us, but to rest on us, because he has the rule, the rule over sin, the rule over death, the rule over hell. He has, as the book of, as the book of Revelation tells us, I have, he says, the keys of death and of hell. And so dominion is with him. Rule is with him. He is the king. He has authority over everything. And he has the authority to free each one of us who will believe in him. And Jesus and Mary brings forth this king, the king of the Jews, the king of the world, Christ, the king of peace. And this is the joy that we must experience during this liturgy of having this tremendous sense of everything that oppressed me is now I'm free of because of Jesus. That's the glory and the joy of the incarnation. The Saviour is here, somebody who can really, who has the power to free us from everything that oppresses us. Just like the children of Israel were freed from the oppression of Egypt by Moses. Take it, God taking them out and using Moses to free them from Egypt. Well, the Egypt that we have been freed from is the Egypt of sin, the Egypt of oppression by Satan. He has come to set us free from that. And, as, and, and when we begin to believe in him, that is what happens in our lives. We are freed. He gives us his spirit. And we begin to experience this freedom, the freedom that the Bible tells us about of the children of God, the freedom of the children of God. This is the joy of Christmas. This is the gift of God. We, we exchange gifts at Christmas. Why do we exchange gifts at Christmas? Because God has given us the greatest gift that he possesses, which is his only son. The gift of Jesus, which gives us life, which gives us freedom frees us from the very things that oppress us most of all, the fundamental thing that oppresses us most of all, sin. That is now dealt with. And we do, but this is an ongoing process. It's not an instant thing. It's a daily uniting of ourselves with Jesus, allowing him to live in us every day. It's not a once and for all thing at baptism, so that we come into the baptism of water and say, Alleluia, I'm free. No, it's a lifelong process, a daily process of walking with the Lord, allowing him to carry us to the kingdom of God. That is the process of our Christian lives. And the other thing that I want to leave you with, we'll be celebrating Mass in a moment. And we will be receiving Jesus. We will be receiving his body and blood. It's the same, and we've just been to the milk grotto, and I talked to you there about the wonderful, beautiful image of, of Mary feeding Jesus with her milk there. 
and that's a prefiguration of Jesus feeding us with his body and blood. And so we need to remind ourselves about what John Paul II was always talking about, about the Mass. That wherever the Mass is celebrated, Mary is intimately involved. Simply because the blood, the body and the blood that we receive during the Mass is the body and the blood that Jesus, that the second person of the Trinity, took from Mary to become man. And he gives that body and blood, now glorified, now divinized, now powerful beyond words and infinitely divine, to us, to draw us into himself. So Jesus and Mary are very much present in every Mass. Jesus, obviously, but Mary also because it's the body and the blood that we're receiving that he took from Mary that he now gives to us. So let's thank God for that on this Christmas celebration, this Mass in honour of the Incarnation. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. His favour rests on us who believe in his Son, Jesus Christ. Rosa Gades Salutata, Novo Mori Fecundata, Vira Dei Grazia. Gade Mate Gade Rosa, Gade Thank you.